Yo, y'all. All right, so real quick, I just kind of want to do a briefing, you know, kind of a spreading the love of a horror film that I've liked ever since I saw it as a teenager in the 90s when it was, I believe, released on video then. And um, this is actually a sequel to uh, another popular horror film from the late 70s. Um, and in a lot of ways, I think the sequel surpasses the original. Now, uh, the movie I am referring to here is When a Stranger Calls Back. Boom. All right. I think this one surpasses the original in many ways. Now, I can't take away, and no, nor nobody else could take away, the fact that the first 20 minutes of the original When a Stranger Calls with Carol Kane from 1979 came out. No, nobody can deny the fact that, that was some taut, tight, you know, uh, well done suspense and terror and just the first 20 minutes of that film before it breaks off into the other plots of the film and follows different characters. Which, you know, a lot of people thought with the original it was kind of off-putting and kind of threw the, the, threw the whole tone and everything off of it, which I can kind of, kind of understand that. However, on this one, this movie is so badass. It's years later, of course. Carol King returns and so is uh, the police detective, uh, Charles Durning. And uh, this time, there's a girl who's played by one of my favorite favorite, favorite underrated scream queens, Jill Sholin, who, you know, of course, starred in The Stepfather, Cutting Class, Popcorn, Fan of the Opera, etc., etc. Um, yeah, Jill Sholin. So she's the victim in this one. And it begins very creepily like the original did, where the first 20, 30, the first 20 minutes, it's like a girl babysitting at a, in a big house and being terrorized by someone. In this one, though, it's a little different. She's not so much getting phone calls. There's a stranger that shows up behind the door who sh whom she can't see who he is and is demanding to, uh, or asking to come inside the house and because his car broke down down the road. And she uh, is too timid to let him in, of course. But uh, And she's babysitting the children and something happens to the children and it develops this great climax in the first 20 minutes. Then it skips to her in college. And she's now disheveled, very freaked out, you know, um, kind of traumatized by all the stuff that's going on because she has realized over the years she's been been followed. Anyway, and watched. And anyhow, so uh, Carol Kane comes to the picture because she goes to uh, this crisis center, I believe, I don't recall, but to the center where Carol Kane pretty much plays like a um, same character from the original, but now she's... She's in the law enforcement department, I believe, and she's also like a fem like a women's rights, not women's rights, but uh, she helps uh, teach defense to women and stuff like that, you know, to be very uh, cautionarily independent and strong to take care of themselves. So she helps, starts, uh, she starts helping uh, Jill Sholin's character, Julia, I believe it is. And, uh, things just keep kind of escalating. Like, uh, she comes home in her apartment at night and the door's already locked and, like, art articles of clothing in her closet are not there. Or a book was m moved to another shelf or another desk or a table. Things like that. So it's like things that kind of lead up and are creepy. And it is a creepy film. And I will say this. The fucking ending, which you don't really see coming, just the way it's... <sighs> What I'm trying to say is, it's not like some shock reveal of who the killer is, you know, but uh, what is shocking is how the climax is played out. Um, and, you know, I really don't want to say too much, because there's, there's other things I can mention, but I don't want to say too much. But I will say this, the the guy in this one, the stranger, has, is a ventriloquist. So, that's all I'll say, but... No, there's not no tacking dolls in it, but, you know, he could do things with his voice. Throw off voice into a different direction so it sounds like it's coming from a different direction it's very cool shit the cool concept indeed and by the director of april the original april fool's day no less fred walton so definitely check this out when a stranger calls back i don't know if it's on netflix i don't believe it is but i believe it's you can find it in formats so check it out sometime if you're a fan of the original or at least liked it but you're kind of off-putting because it didn't sustain the suspense building up then check this one out because this one definitely delivers and I believe this was made for the Showtime Network back then when they started producing their own films but uh, it's well worth it so um, in my opinion so check it out peace out